Hello and welcome to one of the most insane videos I have ever released on my channel. This includes two of the rarest animals ever filmed for YouTube, but no spoilers. Let's get right into it. Damn, it's been a long time since I filmed a video. What's up guys? <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's like a four week break since I last filmed. I had a good backlog, but now it's time to get back to it. Cass and I are doing a road trip to the northeast of Thailand, one of the most exciting areas for snakes in the whole country. One of my all time favorite areas again. And we're going to just chill there for like a week filming videos. It's going to be lit, or at least I hope so. All right, we don't know what the weather's going to be like. It's early June. We're hoping we're going to catch the beginning of the rainy season. There's going to be good activity. But either way, I'm sure there's going to be good snakes around. Yeah, we're about nine hours up the country right now. And we've got another five hour drive today before we get to our location. So without further ado, it's early morning, but I'm going to get going so we can get there at a good time. Peace. And we have arrived. Look at this beautiful environment. It's so much greener over on this side of the hill. There's clearly been a lot of rains in the last week here, and I can see more rains on the horizon too. But yeah, you can see the yellow starting to come in on those northern upper elevation forest trees. And, and I'm telling you guys, this place has some of the best snakes in the country. Like it is ridiculous how many species exist here and not just small wormy ones. There's so many big and impressive snakes. There's like eight species of rat snake here alone. It's truly an incredible area and I cannot wait to get out and herp. I'm going to sort myself out a motorbike first and foremost, then chill, have some dinner and then we'll get out in the late afternoon. All right, the Honda Clip 150 is fully fueled up and I'm headed up the mountain. It's time to start herping. I won't be filming much, but it's a nice warm afternoon with some cloud cover here and there. Let's see if anything's on the road. As is kind of the tradition of this channel, here's a sunset view of the area we're herping in. You can see the Swidden agriculture in the foreground, but there's also on those upper areas some pristine submontane forest. Hopefully this is the last piece of video before a snake, so let's cut to that now. All right, it's just turned twilight and first snake on the road. Is this... Yeah is this uh, male Gumprex pit viper, I believe. Um, looking at the side of the head, definitely looks more gump than popes. Males can be pretty hard to tell apart of these two, but I am at quite high elevation right now. And this guy's uh, out moving early here. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly came to life a bit there. But yeah, that's uh, Gumprex pit viper. First time ever talking about this species on the channel. Restricted mainly to the northeast of Thailand. Here it occurs mainly above 1,500 meters. There's actually three species of green viper which occur sympatrically here. And this is probably the coolest of them. Big adult male gump. Females get giant, by the way. But yeah, let's see what else is about. Oh my God. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God, one of my dreams just came true. Second reptile of the night. Do you know what this is, guys? <gasps> oh my word. This is Harold Young's supple skink. One of the most incredible and rare skinks in Thailand. I am in disbelief. I was talking to my girlfriend saying, I saw a DOR on one of these here last time, which was the first record for this province even. There wasn't even a record close to this part of Thailand before, and I was dreaming of finding one here. Guys, look at this animal. I don't know how many of you guys know on the channel, but I absolutely adore fossorial skinks. They're definitely my second favorite group next to snakes, and this is the fossorial skink of fossorial skinks, the most iconic one in Thailand, the most famous. Harold Young supple skink. This is actually unreal. If there was one non-snake find I could have got in this trip, or any trip in the whole of Thailand, I would have chose this animal. Like this is my number one target lizard in the whole country. And I'm just absolutely blown away. I'm gonna go take some pictures of this beauty. I'm done, this is incredible. All right, after the rush of that Harold Young eye, it's got a Sub-adult or sort of, yeah, yeah, definitely sub-adult is the right classification for this. Uh, sub-adult 
Gumprex Pit Viper. So two Gumprexi to start off this trip. That's not bad whatsoever. You can see the females, they always have the yellow eye and uh, that kind of very strong barring on the body is also very typical of females of this species. Uh, this one's uh, actually quite nice, chubby too. Must have had a nice meal in her and uh, gonna grow up to be very, very big. I've seen some truly giant adult female Gumprexi. It's really impressive, but let's keep moving. Gumprexi are coming in all shapes and sizes tonight. Just after that uh, small female, we got this juvenile male. Nice white spotting on the dorsum of this one. I'm pretty sure this is Gump because we're up at almost 1,700 meters on the road right now. And uh, it seems like we picked up where we left off. Like last time, just so many green vipers crossing the road and yeah, same thing here. Despite the world's brightest full moon looming behind that tree, there's still uh, snakes coming out on the road. Nice at this early point before the moon's got too high. This is a beautiful, beautiful juvenile Parius geminatus, a twin spotted slug snake, which is a mountain or submontane forest dwelling slug snake. You uh, get up here and honestly, they can be really, really, really common when it rains a lot, but they can be kind of hard to find in dry periods. I've never had any trouble turning them up. And this guy's just crossing the road looking absolutely gorgeous there, like vibrant orange snake. That's pretty dope. Oh my God, guys. Oh my word. I was like, that's not what I think it is, is it? It is. It is. It is my dream snake in Thailand. Crossing the road, full moon, first night. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? It's huge as well. Oh my God, I'm catching it. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Look at that head. Look at this snake, guys. Holy f That is it. I'm actually nerdgasming, guys. I'm actually nerdgasming. Like, this is, this is Slowinski's crate. The beautiful banded crate, Bungara Slowinski just crossing the road on my first night here, full moon. And look at the size of it, guys. Look at the size of it. It's not small. This is bigger than most Malayan crates you would see. I thought this species was dinky. This is, by the way, this is seconds after that slug snake. I didn't even drive more than like more than 20 meters down the road. It was just crossing ahead of me while I was holding that slug snake. I am in actual awe that this just happened. I was saying to Cass that I have a feeling this could be the trip, but I was no basis to that at all. No basis whatsoever. And the second I saw this, I was like, okay, is it gonna be a wall snake? Is it gonna be a Malayan crate? I just knew instantly the second that I saw it on the road, I was like, my dreams have come true. First Harold Young supple skink, and then Slowinski's crate. My word. Okay, so we came back up on the road to release this beauty and I figured why not talk about it for a minute? Because after all, this is one of the most incredible snakes I've ever found. I mean, look at this. This is in my top three snakes of all time without a shadow of a doubt. Slowinski's crate, the rarest elapid snake in Thailand and one of the rarest in Southeast Asia, full stop. These are so rarely seen across their distribution and only recently discovered in Thailand. I'm just the third person to see one and they're so beautiful. Like, I understand why one of their common names is the beautiful banded crate. Like, I mean, they're banded like the other species, but if you look closely at the bands, it's made up of spots, you know? And they've got that awesome V pattern on the head too, as you can see there. And also, if you look interesting, like Bungarus fasciatus, they got this stubby little tail. Nope, this isn't a regen tail. This is how it naturally looks. It's not a small snake either, as big as like the biggest Malayan crates we see. So certainly not a tiny crate. And it's just incredible to see here. You know what? I've just remembered a fascinating story about this species. So it's actually named after a herpetologist, American herpetologist called Joe Slowinski. And Joe Slowinski was bitten and died as a result of a crate bite. Actually, not this species. It was Bungarus wang houtingi or Multisynctus. We're not sure exactly which one, but the reason he died was because he was bitten on 9-11, right? So the US Embassy, when they called them to try and get him airlifted out to hospital, 
They were indisposed. They couldn't respond and get any emergency evacuation for him. So his colleagues tried for two days straight to keep him alive through mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR resuscitation. But unfortunately, due to like flooding, they just couldn't get the emergency services to him and he passed away. I guess after two days of CPR, they were probably all on the verge of death almost. Crazy story, but unfortunate for him. But fortunately for me, I get to see this incredible snake named in his honor. Bungarus Slowinskii, Slowinski's crate. Let's let it go. We've realized that he doesn't realize he can get over this wall. So we're gonna give him some assistance because the last thing we want is this guy going back onto the road. There we are. And this incredible, majestic, super, super, super rare elapid is hopefully never going to be seen again by people. Please do not ever cross back this way. Do not cross the road. Thank you. Okay, adrenaline rush worn off and another juvenile gump on the road. This is an, almost the exact spot I found the crate. Uh, this one is just cruising around here. I just went back up on the road. But yeah, cute little snake. Let's keep moving. Okay, seconds after that viper. I think we can confidently say that I have not come here at a bad time of year. The rains have moved in here. You can just tell the area is damp, the trees are green and snakes are moving. This is a beautiful, uh, what's a common name, common name? Uh, mountain slug snake. Yes, Parius macularius, the true form. And uh, yeah, you can see different to that one we've got in the south, very different from the one in yellow. This one has that really white head, which looks great by the way along with less like consistently barred patterning on the body. I saw one of these freshly DOR tonight. It's quite a common species in the area, one I'd very much expect to see during a period of activity. And that is for sure going on tonight. It's a great night for herping. The moon is big, but the snakes are out. I was originally gonna wrap up at nine tonight and go back down to meet Cass, who had some work to do tonight, and then go herping in the lowlands of her. But given the activity, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna stay up here until activity drops off, because I'm not going longer than like five minutes at all without getting a snake. Here's another beautiful Parius geminatus. Just gonna flick him off the road. Come here, buddy. Oh. Freak out, 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 freak out. Freak out. There you go. All right, we've seen so many gump now, I'm officially gonna stop filming them. This will be the last one I show. All right, after that last clip where I said I wouldn't film anymore, I didn't really see much. Um, the moon got super high, super bright, and activity dried up. I saw one more Gumpreg's pit viper, and then I went back to town to pick up Cass, and we've come back up just to do a little bit of walking before we call an early night. With the, thing, with the way things are shaping up, with the fact that I got Slowinski on the first night, Almost all of my targets here are now diurnal. So I am gonna switch, I am gonna make sure I stay in a very diurnal sleep schedule, which means we're gonna be wrapping up early every night, but uh, let's see if we can get another snake or two before we go back tonight. It's beginning to drizzle a bit, but just got our first like a uh, Acanthosaurus, oh, what is it, Lepidogaster. Yeah, Acanthosaurus Lepidogaster, juvenile without any pretty colors. I'll film when I find one that's like very beautiful. All right, so finally something happened. Firstly, I caught this tiny little Svenomorphus species. Not sure exactly what one it is, uh, but yeah, very interesting little thing. And while I had this guy in my hand, I spotted a sleeping mock viper. So uh, another species for the night. Let me go get that guy once I've put this kink somewhere safe. All right, now I've got this angry little fellow in hand. Nice morph, nice kind of orangey brown morph of this individual. Pretty cool species and uh, very bitey, although more or less harmless, like rear fanged, but I'm pretty sure this guy would have no effect on even an unhealthy human. Is he gonna bite me? Yes, he is. Yeah, thanks, man. Now, you're, now your teeth are stuck. And that right there is my cue to let this guy go. <laughs> but yeah, first mock viper of the trip. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another. I'm gonna let him go because he's going, he's going totally spasmoidal. All right, guys, night herping is officially truncated. If we don't see something on the way home, I'll see you in a bit. All right, I feel like I say this way too much, but we've got an unexpected problem with the car, which is majorly truncating our plans for today. It just won't start. I don't know if it's a battery issue. We tried to jump start it, didn't work. Mechanic will be arriving soon, and hopefully we can get this show on the road. But for now, we're just parked up here. Well, that car business uh, took the entire day. 
Um, I went to photograph some stuff in the afternoon, some stuff that a friend of mine has here. And uh, I'm gonna go pick up Cass, get some food, and then it's gonna be time to go herping. So I'm very excited, very, very excited. I mean, I don't know how things can get any better than they have begun. There's still a ton of good stuff we could find here. There's still a ton of targets, which I'd absolutely love to see. Yeah, okay, we got the most flashy, we got the most impressive one, but there's tons of amazing snakes here anyway, as you guys all remember from last time. So even if we're not getting lifers, I'm sure we can turn up some great stuff. And in the next video, I have a surprise for you, but for now, let's keep moving. All right, it took us almost until nightfall, but we finally got our first, I'll still call this a diurnal snake. And this will be a familiar one for everyone watching the channel. We've seen them recently in my videos. Oh, is he going to attack the tech the diffuser? I guess his eyesight's probably not so good at night, but a uh, beautiful copperhead racer, Colognathus radiatus. Species, oh, he's inverting his hemipenes, that's odd. I saw a snake in the, in the shadows just blasting across the road and literally dived out. This is a stunner though. So much more beautiful than that one we got in Yalla earlier in the year. And also, I don't know if it's just night, but it's also way less defensive. It hasn't bit me at all. Is he gonna bite? Okay. He's fine. Why do I let him do that? <laughs> I just wanted to see and now I regret it because I'm gonna be bleeding there, of course. Goddamn goofball. Anyway. <sighs> That's our first snake, this beautiful copperhead racer, a lovely rat snake, which I'm never sad of seeing. And I can see him wanting to play dead. He's, he's considering it. Ooh. It's kind of in two minds, half playing dead. Look, because when I pick him up, look how limp he goes. He's in two minds, but we're going to let him scoot on. And we're going to see if there's any, any rarer snakes on the road tonight. All right, unsurprisingly, first live snake of nightfall is a neonate Gumprex pit viper. It's truly a juvenile viper season in Thailand right now. Everywhere around the country, everything is in hatchling form. And honestly, Gumprex, like, you check out the size wise, like, they're honestly quite big for hatchling vipers. Maybe these guys hatched out like a month ago and they've grown a bit. But the other hatchlings I was seeing around in Thailand have been tiny. All right, rapidly after the, those two starting observations, this huge <laughs> macularius, which have it's completely missing one eye, I just realized. Look at that, guys. It's completely missing an eye on that side, but you can see on the other, which is why he's reacting defensively to me. Cool pattern on this guy. Just gonna move him off the road. All right, so uh, I bumped into my friend Lek on the road, who just caught a few minutes ago this awesome uh, many-banded green snake, although this one almost has no bands whatsoever and he uh, brought it to show it to me. He cruised this just at sunset down on the uh, lower part of the mountain. He knew I was up here, so he came to show it, which is very kind of him. Absolutely beautiful snake here. Like such, like, I, I don't know, this one, we saw a couple of these last time we were here. Um, one of them had very reduced bands, but this one has absolutely none, which is very cool. It's a interesting and uh, kind of unique species of rat snake, which occurs up here in the far Northeast of Thailand exclusively. And probably the most interesting thing about this snake is that it predates almost exclusively, or as we know, exclusively on huge earthworms, which you can see up here every now and again, crossing the road or in the forest. But yeah, great that we get to have a look at this beautiful snake here. What a cool find, and I'm very happy to see this. Maybe we'll find, find our own in our time here. They're not super rare in this area, but certainly not common whatsoever. One of the kind of non-common special snakes in the area. All right, we actually walk cruise the snake and it's Cass's first ever twin spotted slug snake. Nope, that's a lie. She saw them in Northwest Thailand. The first of this trip actually, and this one's got some really, really strong banding on it. What a beautiful individual. Decent sized, I mean, it's definitely a sub adult, but yeah, what a beautiful color on this one. These are certainly one of the best slug snakes in the, in the region, no doubt about that. Even if they are very common here. All right, we just picked ourselves up another species for the trip. Another green snake for the night. Probably some of you might have thought it was the same one as before, but no, look, this one doesn't have a brown tail. This is Buiga cyanea, the green cat snake. Not the only species of Buiga that occurs up here in these mountains, but, oh, he's musking on me. Well, that, good thing Buiga must doesn't smell bad. Anyway, one second. Okay, got him to sit still momentarily so I can show you this guy's awesome jet black eyes. A trait totally unique to the ones in the northeast of Thailand and probably in Lao neighboring countries. But yeah, up here, they're very, very unlike the Buiga Sionia we get elsewhere in Thailand. And you can really see that. Even the color is a tit little bit different. At this size, it's not so evident, but... Hello, buddy. You want to shake my hand? Shake my hand? 
Oh, you want to climb on my hand, that's what you want to do. I accept that, as long as you're not biting. You can get a proper good look at this guy's eyes. Such a nice shade of green they have up here. Yeah, wonderful snake. Good addition to the night, but they're not rare. This is one of the more common nocturnal species you see along the road here, at least in my trips to the area. So we'll let him keep moving. Little green viper on the edge of the road here. Compractor, of course, gonna leave him be, as is going to be the norm now. All right, guys, big win. I got my first ever Hebeus igneous. Well, that's not true, actually. We did get one on our last expedition, but Harry caught it while walking a different stream by himself. So this is the first of the species I've ever actually personally found, which is awesome. It's also about double the size of the last one we had and in way better condition. The last one we had was so ugly. Whereas on this one, you guys can really see the patterning, the spots. And if you look at the venter, what defines it as Hebeus igneus is that black sort of markings on the venter. Got a nice little head too, more like the Shawensii. This is for sure the rarest Hebea species occurring in the area. Cartiensis is pretty common around here, and this one way more beautiful and certainly the lesser seen of the two. Very happy to find this. I think I'm probably gonna photograph this guy and then call it a night. It's been an amazing first couple days here. We've got to see some of the iconic snakes to this region of Thailand, and this is just another one added to the list.